Hank and I have literally just this moment finished our gravel epic around the majority of King Alfred's Way, which is a new gravel trail in the south of England. If you've not seen that video over on GCN yet, then do make sure you check it out. But right here, right now, I thought I would talk you through the bike and the kit that I've been using. we have been given amazing gravel bikes from Moots. This is their Route RSL. But rather than talk you through it when it's completely covered in mud and festooned with bags, well, I'll give it a wash first. There we go, a little bit better. We're clean, me and the bike, although it is unfortunately still raining. Now, as you can see, I have temporarily dispensed with my Topeka bike packing bag so we get a better look at the majesty that lies beneath, this being the Moots Route RSL gravel bike. Now this is one of four gravel bikes that Moots have in their range, this being the most racy version of it. Now actually they've tweaked the geometry and the specifications this year, we'll go on to that in just a little moment. Now, all four bikes share many of the same fundamentals, which is they are, of course, made out of titanium. That's what Moots does. It's all Moots have done for the last 30 years, and they're all made by hand at Moots' very cool factory in Steamboat Springs, Colorado. The tubing that they use is three aluminium, 2.5 vanadium titanium tubing that's custom drawn in the US with the exception of the dropouts, which are 3D printed in 6.4 titanium. And then it's assembled with Moots' customary double pass welding, which as you can see when you look closely, is a thing of beauty. Now this being the more racy end of the spectrum, so the geometry is a little bit more agile, but actually Moots have slackened the head angles off slightly this year, although not to ridiculous extent. So this is still a 72 degree head angle on there. Chain stays nice and short at 430 millimeters long. Bottom bracket drop 69 millimeters. Yeah, and also increase the tire clearance. So I've got 45 millimeter tires now on this and they fit with plenty of room to spare. Hang's bike was the Route 45, which funnily enough can fit 50 millimeter wide tires in despite the name. Now it's also slightly different in the head angle on that one is one degree slacker, same size, size 56. So it'll mean the bike feels a little bit more stable at higher speeds. And to balance it out, the chain stays are also seven millimeters longer. Both bikes though share the same bottom bracket specification, which is gravel wide. So a standard road chain set wouldn't fit on here because you need a slightly longer spindle. And that allows the chain rings to be spaced out a little bit more so that you can fit those wider tires and the shorter chain stays on there. As you can see though, Shimano do a gravel wide chain set for GRX and SRAM of course do one for SRAM Force as well. Now you can choose the finish options of your moots. Both of ours have this fantastic satin finish, which as I said in the main film, it kind of has this jewel-like tactile quality. It's quite remarkable. Now, question is, what do you put on your amazing timeless titanium frame? Well, fortunately for us, only the best clearly was the specification technique from Moots. And so we have got, in addition to the Moots titanium stem and seat post, a whole load of NV components. We've got NV handlebars. Interestingly, Moots spec slightly shorter stem and wider handlebars with these new slightly slacker head angles to keep the bike feeling nice and nimble when you're steering. We've also got the NV G23 gravel wheel set on there with Chris King hubs. Chris King headset as well. I mean, it really is like a, a wish list of components, isn't it? On the nice wide envy wheels, I've spec Pirelli Cinturato tires, as I said, in a 45 millimeter width. I went for the faster rolling version, had plenty of grip actually, despite the slightly damp conditions at time. And they're also there though, principally so that I could hang on to Hank's wheel at his chosen speed of 45 kilometers per hour on tarmac sections. <laughs> He was, he was really going some, it has to be said. Um, now, as you can see, we have a full Shimano GRX Di2 group set on there, run two by, so I've got an 11 to 34 cassette at the back, and also 48 to 31 chain rings. Interestingly, that's the widest gap between chain rings that Shimano sell in any of their road, gravel, or mountain bike group sets. Lastly, I've been sat on a Cell Italia SLR saddle. I've also got my trusty Look X Track pedals on there. And then I wouldn't normally draw your attention to bottle cages, but when they're also things of beauty, handcrafted from titanium, I think it's probably worth taking a moment to appreciate them. 
For a bike packing vid, it feels rude not to talk you through just some of the other equipment that we took on the trip as well. So in the handlebar bag up front, I had uh, my warm clothes, so down jacket, pair of fleece trousers, a long sleeve base layer, and a pair of woolly socks uh, and a hat as well. Uh, and then in this giant saddle bag, I had uh, a very, very warm four season down sleeping bag, a bivy bag, and a mat as well. Hank very kindly took the stove and the pans, which meant that in my frame bag, I had some warm clothing, like a, a jacket and so forth, gloves. I also had my lights uh, that I didn't want on the bike at all times, uh, and my tools and my spares. So a peak multi-tool, a couple of spare inner tubes, um, a plug, tubeless plug kit, um, which, Fortunately, I didn't have to use either, um, and also a pump, of course, um, which meant that in my top tube bag, I needed just a credit card and my phone, and also battery pack as well, and cables. So we traveled light because we knew that we were away for just 36 hours, but it did weigh quite a bit, just because of the temperatures that we were out in. Neither of us wanted to get cold, so we both took quite a lot of down with us. So. Uh, we didn't get cold. So there we have it then, a quick overview of my Moots Route RSL gravel bike and also a quick rundown of some of the kit that I took with me on that trip. If you haven't seen the video over on GCN of Hank and I riding the King Alfred's Way gravel route in the south of England, then please do check it out and also give this video a big thumbs up if you enjoyed it.